In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a deep house bass in FL Studio. We're going to be using Citrus, and it's going to sound like this. What's up, my producer friends? It's David with AnotherMonsterProductions.com. So in this video, I want to continue with my Citrus series, which I started a couple weeks ago. I basically did an entire walkthrough of the plugin. So if you haven't seen that and you want to check it out, it's a pretty long tutorial. Uh, I go through pretty much the entire plugin and everything that I think is important to kind of know about. But in this video, I want to actually dive in, start making some sounds. And I thought a deep house bass would be a good place to start because it's a really easy sound to make. So without further ado, let's get Get straight into it. All right, so the first thing that we're going to want to do when we have our citrus loaded up here is go up to this uh, top left hand corner, click this button here, go to presets, and we're going to go to default preset, which is all the way up here in the top left. And so that's basically going to get us a sine wave. It's going to sound like this. And by the way, I'm playing C4 just in case you're wondering. So let's go into my main tab here. And I want to go ahead and go here where it says pitch, and we're going to bring this all the way down. That's negative 24 semitones, uh, which is basically the same thing as bringing it down two octaves. So now it's going to sound like this. So it's basically just a sub bass tone, pure sine wave. Uh, in case you didn't know, that's a easy, very easy way to make a sub bass. Uh, basically take a sine wave, bring it down a couple octaves, boom, we got a sub bass. So this is going to be one part of the deep house bass that we're going to be making. And basically the next step is I'm going to go into my operator two. Uh, and basically we're going to be modulating this first operator by the second one. So this one is going to be called our modulator and this would be called our carrier. And basically what we're going to do is just bring this up. And you can hear it begin to get FM'd as I bring that up there. And uh, I think I'm at about 57%, uh, somewhere around there between like 55%, 60%. I'm just kind of going for it being right around, I guess, three o'clock there. And then what I'm gonna do is go over here to our ratio and I'm gonna bring this up to four. So you can kind of hear. how that changes, it's actually pretty cool. Um, I've experimented with it and I found that four sounds the best to me. I think that, you know, it might be worth experimenting with this and seeing what sounds best to you. Uh, so try some different ratios there, that might be kind of fun. So really the next step is just attack, decay, sustain and release and shaping the bass sound in a way that, uh, you know, kind of gives it that plucky sound that we're going for. So I'm gonna stay in my operator two here and um, it should be by default where you're, you have volume highlighted and then it's in the envelope section. Uh, but if for some reason it's not, then that's where you wanna be, volume, envelope, and I'm just gonna click this button here to turn the envelope on. And then I'm gonna drag this over here and I'm just gonna, I mean, very easily kinda make a, a plucky shape. <laughs> I mean, that's, it's really that easy to do. So the subby part of this bass, you may be able to hear depending on the speakers, is held out a little longer. It's not really that plucky part. And so I'm gonna go into my operator one and I'm gonna do the same thing. So volume, envelope, turn it on, and I'm just gonna make the same sort of shape. Now this is kind of a personal preference thing. Maybe, I mean, depending on how much sub you want in there, you don't even necessarily have to do this step, but I kind of have, like having that little bit of sub. So I'll leave that right around there for now. Obviously feel free to tweak this, feel free to make the, turn this into your own sound and you know, shape it in the way that you like. But I mean, really, that's how easy it is to make a deep house bass. Now we are gonna go into some things that you can do to make this even more unique, make this kind of crazy. So Citrus gives you all these capabilities to like actually shape this wave. So if I go back into my operator two, which is our modulator, and we start like, you know, shaping this wave a little bit, we can get some pretty crazy sounds. So for example, That's kind of cool. So if I go to like maybe, I don't know, 12% there, 
adding like a little bit of kind of distortion, I guess, almost. And then we go to this skew effect, like look at what it does to the waveform. That sounds cool. I mean, you can get crazy with it and it's all fun stuff to uh, mess with, have fun with. And another thing that we could potentially do if we wanted to is go into our filter section and add some distortion on here. So this is like basically a wave shaper. I don't know if you ever messed with the Fruity Wave Shaper, but it's a distortion plugin and slash saturation plugin that basically allows you to shape different types of distortion and saturation within the plugin. So this is the same sort of thing. Obviously, I don't wanna to go too much off on a tangent here, um, but if you did wanna do this, basically what we would do is uh, we could bring this, this one up here and I'll make it go out of my matrix there and just turn that one off. So now I need to go to my filter and I'm just gonna make sure that the cutoff is basically not filtering out any frequencies. And then I can turn this on. Now for this particular sound, I don't necessarily want distortion, I don't think, but. kind of wanted to show you guys that that was there and that potentially you know maybe some bass sounds you guys are going to want to add distortion on so that's how you would go about doing that and that's about it guys so if you like the video be sure to hit the like button if you're new to the channel consider subscribing i am putting out a lot of videos like this uh, fl studio related content and specifically a lot of sound design tutorials with stock fl studio plugins um, so subscribe if you're into that kind of stuff and i will see you in the next video